Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, B Weekly community call. So today we will be talking about how to monetize your content across AI internet. And uh, we will talk about that with the professional of, uh, of this topic. So please um, bear in mind that the call will be recorded. So if you'd like uh, us to cut a part of the call for some reasons, please reach out to, to me we can do that so this is our agenda for today we'll have a small intro which i'm doing right now uh the dapier demo and a small discussion afterwards so please meet our today's guest dan dan has absolutely fantastic uh work experience and uh like uh, honestly then when i've been checking your linkedin i've been like truly imp impressed by by the experience that you've been able to gather so uh, Dan is a managing partner at uh, B20 Labs Venture Studio. He's a co-founder of Dapier, raised over 40 million in venture capital and uh, got a lot of experience in different areas. Uh, so yeah, Dan, super glad to uh, to see you on the call today. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, glad to meet you and I'm giving you the stage. So uh, yeah, please. Uh, go on and yeah, let's let's check out that year. Uh, one second. Yeah, that sounds good. One second. I'll stop sharing and I'll make you the host. Perfect. Yep. We are good. Awesome. Um, thanks. So I'm going to try and share some stuff. Um, initially just some slides and um, then actually show show a demo. Uh, but yeah, thanks thanks for uh, inviting me to, to join you guys and uh, kind of get in front of this community. Our, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting as much noise as there is around kind of AI and excitement. Um, it's really uh, challenging to get in front of builders and get the right attention. So we just excited to kind of show people what we're thinking about and how we're building Dapier and, uh, and yeah, take it from there. So um, super high level, you know, Dapier, the way we think about it is monetization infrastructure for the new internet. Um, our go-to-market is focused on helping media companies navigate AI. And we'll talk a little bit about why. I'm only going to do like a few slides, then I'll show a live demo. Um, but um, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're just excited about uh, kind of the opportunity that, that um, really started to emerge when, you um, uh, you know, kind of chat GPT went mainstream and kind of all, all, all this stuff. So anyway, super, super high level. Uh, you mentioned it briefly, you know, by, by way of background, I've been kind of a founder at the intersection of content distribution and monetization uh, for over 15 years. Um, I had one of the early kind of mobile ad companies was really my first foray um, into media. I spent uh, about eight years uh, building a company called Mojiva. Um, that we eventually sold to Pubmatic, which is one of the leading kind of public ad tech companies out there. Um, and then uh, kind of six or seven years uh, after that, um, spent building a company called Power TV, which really helped media companies navigate this new distribution paradigm, which was smart TV and streaming. So I've been kind of in content distribution and monetization for a long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, still, still doing it. So it's a hot and exciting space, at least for me. Um, so... Uh, just to give you uh, kind of a little bit of background on why we started um, uh, Dapier, um, as alluded to. So basically, you know, about, um, you know, I guess, you know, over a year now, when we really first saw the, the first consumer version of ChatGPT, it prompted me and my kind of co-founders to start thinking about what happens when generative AI experiences move up the stack into core consumer apps from folks like Meta and OpenAI. And like, we've seen it now. I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, wherever you're on social, essentially at every post, you have an AI assistant. And I think that's likely the way consumer apps continue to evolve over time. So essentially, um, you have the ability to follow up and ask further questions um, at uh, anywhere, uh, kind of anywhere uh, you, you're a consumer and experiencing some media. Um, a lot of this has created a lot of fear and anxiety amongst the kind of core, um, you know, what I would call media uh, landscape participants, like pu publishers, web publishers. You know, you've seen a lot of noise. I don't know if I have a slide on it here, but really just talking about web, web publishers being afraid that as 
AI, generative AI answers users' questions wherever they are in the stack, whether that's on Google's homepage or um, anywhere across a Facebook app, um, people are going to be going to publisher sites less. And so that's going to destroy their traffic. It's going to up, you know, kind of um, uh, disrupt their business and overall create a variety uh, of, of uh, ch economic challenges. Um, at the same time, the way we think about it is if you're a media company, why is generative AI really different than any new distribution paradigm we've seen in the internet, right? You used to have a phone number, then you got a website, then you got social, then you got a, a video channel on YouTube. Brands and um, you know expect to interact with consumers wherever they are, not the other way around. And so at Dapier, we think about generative AI as a new distribution paradigm um, and think about um, you know, this new kind of uh, user experience um, that's that's evolving. Um, so this is a little bit of the problem we were talking about. Some media companies are losing a lot of traffic to this already. And the solution that we present is, the way we think about it is, you know, what if we were the iTunes-like solution to the Napster problem, which is how do we make it easier for AI developers and LLMs to compensate creators for their content and data rather than just scrape it and say, hey, it's fair use, we're allowed to have it. And more than that, an AI is only as good as the most recent data that it has access to. So while training data is a big part of the discussion where you see, you know, you kind of hear about things like New York Times suing OpenAI and Reddit and, you know, kind of Google doing these licensing deals, that's solved, like training data solves part of the problem, but it doesn't allow an informed AI agent to actually tell you what's happening right now in the world, right? So how do you create a framework to push relevant content from all over the internet into an AI agent uh, wherever it is? So that's kind of what we're all about at Dapier. Um, and to solve this problem, we kind of built a platform that really helps um, content owners take control of their data and create a paper query or ad supported model based on their content for that content to be syndicated into the AI landscape. Um, we also aren't kind of blind to the fact that, you know, the internet isn't going to change overnight, right? Website traffic still exists for many web publishers. They want to monetize that well. And so we want to take the pain out of hosting AI solutions uh, for media companies by providing them turnkey tools to build uh, AI based on their content and actually give them turnkey tools to launch their own chatbots and experiences across their owned and operated sites and apps, which I can show you. And then kind of last but not least, we think there's an opportunity to create completely new monetization opportunities based on, um, uh, yeah, basically based on, on uh, content. So I'm going to dive into a demo now. Um, that just talks about, hang on, I'm just going to log out and, and log back in, um, that basically talks about how, how Dapier works. But I'll pause, um, you know, and see if there's any questions so far. I guess not yet, but the whole topic of uh, AI content is, I guess, a huge discussion that we might have afterwards. Is That's like... Uh... I yeah. see. Yeah, there is a question from Ronette. Is Dapier uh, AGI? Uh, no, no, I don't think. No, I don't think so. Uh, let me see if I can. Well, hang on, just one sec. I'm just trying to. I'm gonna create a new account real quick. But I guess at some point in the future, when there is an AGI, we'd like Dapier to help feed it information on behalf of our publishers. second. All right. Um, I'm going to start this from scratch uh, because uh, I had done a ton of uh, demos. So anyway, um, so this is what people see, by the way, when they come into Dapier. I just created a brand new account, so there's no data in here. But um, essentially, you have two options when you come in. And our goal like, is for anyone with content to first be able to create an AI agent um, based on their content. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Uh, do a quick demo for you. Hang on just one second. I'm trying to navigate this little chair box where essentially, um, uh, you know, let me, let me just show you from my previous account uh, because it'll just, it'll show up better. Um, so essentially I'm just going to show you kind of some agents I've created in the past. Uh, essentially like what we 
hope um, is a media company or anyone with content, really anyone with an RSS feed can come to us, integrate their content and launch a RAG model based on their content. I don't know if you guys, you know, how, how familiar you are with the RAG essentially um, is a protocol that allows AI platforms to exchange, you know, basically retrieve dynamic information and ingest them into, uh, uh, ingest them into the, their answers. Here's a demo we created um, just before the call for, for TechCrunch, just for lack of a, a better example. All we did here was grab the uh, TechCrunch feed, which is available, uh, let's see, like right here. Um, you know, TechCrunch, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with. Yeah, grab the RSS so. feed. This is a public RSS feed and a public demo. TechCrunch is not a customer. I'm just showing this for informational purposes only. I, I think you're showing the, the slides then. So, oh, yeah. oh, is it on the wrong uh, tab? Oh, sorry. Yeah, probably it's the... Uh, oh, okay, wow. So none of that was visible, huh? All right. Yes, right now, it, it's okay, yeah. Hang on one second. So what, what can you see now? Yeah, we can see the uh, basically the HTML, I guess, okay. or what it is. Hang on, it's uh, I don't really use the Zoom full share, so it keeps kind of jumping me out of there. All right, all right. So, <laughs> got it. So, all right, so I'm just, I'm going to try that over again. Thank you for stopping me. So <laughs> I'm going to create a uh, uh, an AI agent based on that uh, feed that we shared. Um, if you see here, that's the URL of the feed I was just sharing. I have added it calling it a TechCrunch demo. Again, TechCrunch is not a partner. This is just for demo purposes only. Um, I've created a description for this AI bot. You're helping guide on all the latest tech and startup technology news. Um, and um, the, as far as a persona of the bot, you know, we're going to use the available content sources, in this case, the TechCrunch feed, uh, to respond to users in a friendly manner. Um, I'm just going to say, you know, what are, uh, what are today's latest AI headlines. I'm going to add that as a prompt sample. I'll update our uh, bot here. Um, and um, as you can see here, I'm sorry, I'm just moving this little floaty carousel around. Um, here's a response from uh, TechCrunch. So essentially, what we've done is we've built a tech uh, uh, AI bot based on the TechCrunch website um, kind of in seconds here um, that ultimately links and refers people back to, to articles. Um, once this kind of model is created, um, it could also be implemented um, by anybody in our marketplace uh, into their own, either into their own sites or apps or made available on a pay per query basis to license. So essentially, um, someone could choose a monetization no! model, uh, of, let's say, you know, a $5 or $10 CPM in order to access that data, um, where it then ends. Oh my God! Uh, is everything okay yeah. there? Someone might want to go on mute. Yeah. Run that. Is everything fine? Is... Oh, uh, Dan, uh, I guess you're a host. So... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So, so essentially, once uh, the AI agent is created, you can hit publish to marketplace. It then shows up in our RAG model marketplace where anyone could come then and here's an, in, an instance of a model that is available now. Um, so if you go to dapier.com and you want to build a GPT or uh, any AI app that has real-time access to stock market data, you can do that today with our Polygon model. Uh, we provide really simple turnkey API endpoints or open AI schema. So you can put this right into a GPT. Um, and say, you know, what's going on today with, uh, you know, pick a stock, um, you know, and we'll, and we'll should get news and information based on that stock back. Um, and essentially our goal, you know, with this, like is to continue to expand ingest points. So right now you can see, I just asked about Robinhood. I got all of the recent news about Robinhood and what's going on um, on that stock. The idea is how do you create a model for pushing content into this emerging AI ecosystem uh, rapidly and making it super, super simple. Today, when you create an AI agent, um, you, you'll see that you can create basically, um, you know, you can add RSS feeds um, or you can add, um, 
uh, content via an Airtable. So essentially you can talk to an Airtable. Uh, we're adding additional capabilities soon, like crawling entire sitemaps, implementing APIs. So we're pretty excited about the future roadmap. And the goal is to make it as easy as possible for anyone with content to both host an AI solution based on their content, not have to invest in a data science team and infrastructure. We'll do all that. Our business model is pretty flexible in order to support that, uh, but then also be able to push it into a marketplace where it can be discovered by AI developers and uh, transacted uh, with an economic model that uh, works for everybody. So I'll, uh, I'll stop my share there. Sorry for the technical difficulties as I jumped around screens. It was not my first time using Zoom, but uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah, I should get better at it, so. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. One second, I'll guess I'll reclaim host. Yes. So um, thanks, thanks for the demo. Uh, what's the um, like the way you will monetize the the application? Like, how would you spread the revenue across, uh, like between publishers and basically uh, like consumers of of the data uh, from your platform? Yeah, so essentially um, anyone using it, it basically sets the business terms for how they want to be compensated for that content. For the sake of media uh, companies, it's really easy. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of a CPM, but essentially it's revenue per thousand impressions. Um, so we think it's easy to back into that to frame of mind. So let's just say for argument's sake, um, a media company wants a $10 uh, you know, CPM for their content. We take a small revenue share, um, the requests you know, are available in our system at 0.001 cents per request or $10 per thousand requests. Um, and then uh, a buyer on the other side of it pays, has a credit card set up in our system. As a query is asked, for instance, you know, what's the latest news today in Austin, Texas? Uh, Texas Monthly will respond with that information and they'll get compensated on a per transaction basis for providing uh, providing the answer. They also provide attribution, so they'll get a link back to their content um, that uh, folks will be able to follow. Um, so that's kind of one way that um, they'll get compensated is basically by the AI platform themselves. In addition, um, you know, the uh, AI applications, you know, the, the AI model that we create, that RAG model can power chatbots and other experiences on their own than operated sites. So for instance, you can imagine you're reading an article about a sporting event. You want to find more about one of the players, the coach, the score, what happened. They can then dive deeper. That creates additional page views. That creates additional revenue. We basically provide the hosting uh, platform for that. Um, that could be monetized by our partner themselves in the form of ads. They can monetize it in the form of creating a subscription-based product, uh, all of which we kind of support turnkey. Uh, turnkey um, uh, for, I didn't show you the last step in our demo, but essentially we have embeddable uh, dockable widgets that are available uh, as well as iframe uh, embeds that anyone could put in their site or app. So you can just add a chatbot there. You can add a new net new content recommendation unit. You can use the API to modify your search. So there's a lot of flexibility. The goal is like, you think about the kind of the goal of the platform is to make it very easy for content and data owners to publish into the, the space and set the business rules around it. So essentially we want publishers and content owners to write the rules. And on the other side of it, the goal is to have developers have a model that they understand. It's like, look, if for every request, I'm going to pay you X, and then they can build their business model around it, whether that's a subscription-based product um, or an ad supported product. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds interesting. And, uh, uh like what are the security implications of uh, using your platform? So for example, um, during our previous community call, uh, we've had a mastermind and Juan had an idea of embedding AI into uh, both legal um, companies and uh, the banking system. So for example, uh, what do you think if uh, a bank would like to use your platform and uh, share some of the legal documents with your platform and then 
the customers would be able to retrieve some information based on that uh, banking data or like what do you think would that be uh, possible or that's uh, not so, so I think in the back, like, I think if you're talking about, you know, sensitive personal info, like, so, so the way, I mean, we've designed the platform is everyone's data is stored in a siloed and secure way. It's not shared among multiple and data model providers. Meaning if you're a bank website and you have an FAQ and some documents that you want to create a chat bot around. Sure, that's actually relatively easy to do with our platform. If you want to build a GPT that you point your users to and say, hey, use our new bank GPT to ask questions about customer service, you can do all that. Um, you know, that, that's kind of like part of the, the self-service uh, of the platform. If you want to decide that you no longer want to do it, the way RAG works, right, it's hosted in a private environment, um, but you're not actually sharing data back with the AI. The AI is just interpreting the context of the question and then attempting to retrieve it from the, the data source. So you can expunge that um, at any time. Our point of view is that in the future, yes, likely um, every application API should be made available for retrieval uh, by AI agents. That seems like a logical evolution um, of, of the internet, right? Like you had, um, you know, I think, uh, think about the iPhone app store, right? Launched with 500 apps, now you have millions. I think right now we think about, you know, we talk about five or 10 kind of foundational AI models, some that are open source and there are going to be thousands of different versions of. I think it's very likely in a couple of years, we're talking about millions of AI agents that need data to flow freely around them. We want to provide the monetization framework around the data, how folks want to opt their data into it. Like we'll protect the data that's in there, but they have to choose how they want to publish it into the ecosystem. And, and who it's made available to. Yeah, makes total sense because uh, like we've had a couple discussions uh, within our community uh, regarding the AI content. And like the first one was like uh, approximately the same idea that uh, you've just presented. So the uh, like the era of AI generated content is uh, like it's basically upon us and we need to understand how we can distinguish uh, like original content that can be served as both the the source of truth in, in some areas and as the data for uh, training future models. Because uh, we know that if you will train your AI model on the data that uh, been produced by the AI, the quality of the output data would decrease over time and the model will essentially degrade. So that's why basically the, the storages of the original content is super important. And the, the second discussion that we've had is that um, uh, AI has been like basically uh, embedded everywhere and it started to hallucinate and uh, like there were... Uh, famous screenshots floating over the internet a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, basically um, when AI suggested to eat nails uh, to yeah. get, like get rid of the fat, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's been like absolutely, absolutely horrendous, honestly. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a huge issue that I can see your platform can help battle. So yeah, that's a great idea. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of what we're thinking is like, how do you just, you know, we have, and there's an incredible wealth of information out there on the internet. Obviously, you know, um, a lot of AI found, you know, training, foundational training is based on open crawl and things like that. Um, but how do you kind of, first of all, most importantly, keep content fresh and prevent hallucin hallucinations, especially when you're asking basic things like what's the weather today, right? Um, then how do you think about, um, you know, millions of GPTs, like, you know, GPTs existing as personas on top of OpenAI are kind of like a baby step, right? How do you get relevant data to your point, you know, from a bank or from, um, you know, an e-commerce app or from kind of any secure and private API 
into these GPTs. So the, one, consumers can easily make and configure their own, but two, that they can operate based on actionable real data in real time. And so we're trying to build the framework for that and the currency around which it kind of transacts. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a daunting task I and mean, we're starting with media companies because I think, you know, if you think about, you know, media companies, by definition, they touch every vertical, every walk of life, um, every language, there's a broad kind of interest in, um, in kind of training both broad and special interest AIs on a variety, on a wide variety of content. And frankly, you know, media companies need a new economic model that works in this world. So we're excited about tackling that first, but certainly we'll expand from there into kind of other verticals um, as, as discussed. Dan, I wanted to first congratulate you on the model. It's really cool, honestly. And I really feel like uh, at this stage, is it would be in, already be incredibly helpful for several types of companies, including, of course, media, right? Um, and I was wondering, what are you thinking about for next steps moving forward? Yeah, so I mean, right now, um, you know, we we have um, a couple of partnerships that we've around uh, announced in the media space. A number more coming uh, soon. Our kind of AI powered experiences are already on kind of uh, hundreds of, of different sites on, on the web. So we're excited about that, and it's achieving um, real volume and scale. Um, what's next, you know, we have kind of a variety of data sets coming from other verticals. Polygon is one we showed in the financial uh, markets arena. We have a couple thousand healthcare related data sets coming soon, uh, which we're very excited about. Um, and we're continuing to kind of add uh, additional uh, models from a variety of partners. Apologies for that uh, background noise. Um, and then kind of the, the last thing, uh, sorry, just one moment. My dog is going to start barking now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's funny. They just, they just go crazy. Um, uh, anyway, um, so, so that's kind of like the data model side. We have a pipeline of what I would call, you know, let's say a target of a hundred, you know, data providers across key verticals that you want content to be fresh in, whether it's, you know, finance, healthcare, um, entertainment, um, weather, uh, sports news, right. Those are key verticals that we're, we're onboarding. Um, what we're really trying to do is get the word out there to GPT builders. We think that it's really like interesting to bring net new and data into these workflows. And, and so we're trying to figure out how we, how we, uh, how we crack that nut, right. Get in front of more builders. And um, to that end, we're going to have a hackathon around our polygon um, stock market model soon to say like build your coolest stock market AI app um, using our data. We'll have some prizes around that we'll announce as well. Um, so yeah, just excited to kind of, um, get that out there. And, and I think like, you know, look right now, um, we're, we're in a world where like the model hasn't been defined yet. Right. So you have some media companies that are suing, you have other media companies that are doing these blanket licenses. We're just kind of taking this point of view of like, if you, if you define the model and say, Hey, you can pay me for my content this is the price, go here, um, then, um, then, then uh, people are much less likely to quote unquote steal. And so um, the goal is just to get that message out and, uh, and also get in front of kind of core AI platforms and say, look, we're, we've aggregated content from hundreds and soon thousands of publishers. Um, let's kind of um, create a model that works for everybody to either license it on a transactional basis uh, or an ad supported basis. And uh, yeah, see how it goes. Awesome. Uh, by the way, have you thought about this? Maybe kind of in like a supply chain kind of way. For example, let's say you want to work with the healthcare industry, right? So maybe have media companies uh, that are providing you with information, but at the same time, uh, getting in touch with the companies that would consume your content. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. So we are, you know, we, we've divided, in, you know, kind of the, uh, the the various, you know, dozens of AI market maps by vertical. And we're looking at, okay, you know, like, you know, again, we've got m m financial market data. What are the likely players that want to do this? And and we think about it as, you know, kind of the foundational models. So, you know, the open AIs and, and, and Googles of the world that are looking for, you know, that are clearly have demonstrated that they're willing to compensate content owners and providing them turnkey um, access. 
So that's kind of like one version of it. And then it's like the application layer. So who's building, you know, um, you know, in the financial space. And there's probably two dozen AI companies that have, you know, raised significant capital to play uh, a role in various financial verticals. And so how do we get those deals done? And that's kind of what we're, we're kind of thinking about, but you're exactly right. We're doing it one vertical at a time on the uh, AI side. And then frankly, a, a similar approach on the agent creation side. So, you know, that's why we did uh, kind of the Airtable integration that we did, why we're kind of coming up with sitemap crawl next. And um, we have a few tricks up our sleeve in terms of other ingest points uh, that are coming soon. One thing that comes to mind is that, I mean, there are several industries that already have a new, like weekly or even daily newsletters, right? In health, insurance, banking, uh, financial and so on, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, maybe, we, I mean, you're making costs be way lower, right? Than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, and maybe we, have you been uh, consider about lowering the entry barriers to that kind of information? Because right now, for example, you got, you could maybe uh, make it affordable for lots of small businesses, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, it, it's based, we have a free forever plan. Right. So a newsletter can come today and build an AI agent based on their newsletter in a minute, like we just showed you. Right. Um, and so that is, you know, I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty exciting. Like we've got, um, like we, we, I think your, your point on lowering the barrier is exactly right. The goal is to democratize access um, to data for AI builders. And ultimately, like if, if you're, uh, um, you know, let's say put, put yourself in the shoes of um, kind of a media company now or a newsletter writer, uh, magazine publisher, um, directory, right? Any of these kinds of businesses, um, like you're thinking about hiring a data science team, you've got to figure out a whole new kind of set of uh, platforms to work on and, and publish to. And we're saying like, Pre, you know, with three clicks, we kind of solve your consumer facing AI problem and give you a channel to commercialize the data. Granted, it's early, like the market's not fully developed yet, but um, but we, we are hoping that there is no barrier with our platform. Like we've been, you know, we've built enough kind of businesses in this space where we know the, the, the really the way to scale and, and what we're interested in is to make it super, super affordable. And so anyone on the call now can go to Dapier, sign up. There's no uh, charge to add your first feed. Uh, we're open to feedback on the pricing. I mean, it's it, 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 this is going to be really, really um, kind of, uh, it should be available to anybody. And at the point where, you know, costs scale, it's because it's working, meaning um, you're already generating revenue. That's awesome. Congratulations. For real. Antoine, appreciate it. Uh, how the data is stored. So, uh, for example, if we will export Slack data, which is basically a set of JSON objects mm -hmm. related to different channels, uh, direct messages, etc., and then send it uh, as a plain text into the Zapier, will it consume it somehow? Or right now, this is only um, RSS feed and Airtable. So right now the public, like we can do the integration you just described, the mm -hmm. public um, connections are RSS and Airtable. We've done custom API integrations. We will do more of those. Um, we can of course support like plain, plain text. We don't expose that on the front end now, but we're not, uh, yeah, we're, we're creating uh, basically your own hosted uh, effectively database for the content and building a RAG API to that database. So we're not, um, sharing that data with the AI, as mentioned uh, before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. And how the data is stored uh, in the database? Is it uh, a vector database or some right. other type of? Correct. Yeah, we vectorize the data that are mm -hmm. provided. Yeah, that's that sounds super cool, actually. Like uh, the, the whole idea behind um, like the content distribution, uh, as I've mentioned, it's like super hot. So I wonder, uh, what's the competition? Uh, are you competing with Google already or some of the bigger yeah. companies? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think so. So so I think 
look, I think there are going to be a few big licensing deals and I think that's going to get everyone's attention, but we are in a world of millions of websites and tens of millions of content creators. Um, even if any individual AI platform comes up with a solution for this, it actually doesn't solve the problem because we're going to be dealing it's it, it, in a world where there's dozens of, again, you know, think about it like four quadrants, right? You have the foundational models, then you have the application layer, you have training data, and then you have dynamic data coming in via RAG. Um, when you combine those four things across, you know, kind of, let's call it 10 key AI players, it kind of creates a, an exponential opportunity, right? Because brands and creators need a single point of publishing, right? Every previous publishing paradigm boils into this way. Like if you're building, you know, you're building a website, you also want a mobile site. If you're building an app, you want an iOS and an Android. If you're building for TV, you want Roku, Fire TV, Vizio, and all these other channels. So content distribution becomes complex very quickly. And so we think simplifying that and creating a single point of entry for your content and then kind of a single point of distribution is the way that, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense. We see some competition, of course, like, you know, there are startups that are thinking about various things. There are some startups focused on consumer facing chatbots you can monetize and that kind of stuff, tooling, right? There are other startups focused on data licensing and rights marketplaces. Some taking a transactional approach, others taking kind of like a, act like an agency approach. That's all well and good. I think there's infinite room. Um, our point of view is an end-to-end -end platform that can serve kind of the lower and mid-market, right? Um, folks that, you know, uh, you know our, a lot of our early partners and where we think will be very successful are networks, right? If you manage more than one brand, you're in a world of pain right now. So we, we have a solution to help manage multiple brands. So, so um, yeah, I think, like I said, I don't think the big players, I, I don't think, you know, they're, they're comp competition. I think they're customers. Um, and I think the, the startups that are competing, um, you know, there's a lot of room, the market's still being defined, but our approach is be a full stack solution. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Uh, and by the way, you've mentioned about the licensing deals, I guess one of the like famous ones, um, is the Reddit one. I don't remember who they've had the contract with, I guess that was Google. But mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, like when the one of the bigger platforms uh, that produces the content uh, on the internet sells the data to the like bigger, um, uh, like bigger companies, that's uh, definitely like uh, yeah. that shows, yeah. And and by the way, so they've done a deal with both Google and OpenAI. And the OpenAI deal is licensing data and getting hosted solutions. So essentially technology integration from OpenAI into Reddit. I think that's the platform we're building for everybody, basically. So that and 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 showing you that they did a deal with both Google and OpenAI shows you that you know we're not going to be in a world with many exclusives. I think we're going to be in a world of mass distribution. Otherwise, um, you know, um, you end up selling yourself short as a content creator, right? If you're a media company that's 200 years old, what number is the right number, right? I mean, how do, yeah. how do you figure that out? Yeah, um, that's... <laughs> so, so maybe there's a number that works for a couple of years while you figure it out. But if that business is going to continue, it needs a sustainable model with uncapped upside, right? So anyway... That's my take. Yeah, that's a great take, honestly, because uh, like I have no idea if I would run a 200 year media company. I have no idea. Well, like how, um, like uh, what's the price to, to sell the data? Right. Yeah, that's uh, mind blowing. <laughs> it's the full work, right? It's the full body of work, you know? Yeah. So, so that's kind of why our thinking is that a transactional model makes sense. And certainly it makes sense for the dynamic nature of what happens from here. So sure, like pay me some number for training data, but if you want today's headlines, that's gotta be at a premium because that the whole business relies on. Otherwise, why am I making headlines? The one thing AI shouldn't be able to do is create headlines, right? It's like, otherwise it's just making news up. So 
Um, anyway, that's kind of, uh, you can see AI synthesizing news and even giving you highlights, but uh, I believe you still want trusted data from trusted sources. Yeah, 100% because uh, like the, the thing that keeps me awake uh, during the night regarding this uh, Reddit deal is that I've got, um, like I'm following a guy on Twitter who created an app that can uh, sneakily mention your application during the conversation on Reddit. So for example, if someone would ask a question on Reddit, how to edit my photo, and you are running the, the app that is basically a photo editor, you can buy his software and his software would basically use OpenAI, jump into the Reddit comments, and sneakily mention your tool uh, during the uh, re while replying to the original poster. Yeah, so yeah, so it looks like uh, this kind of uh, a trick because you can't tell whether this is a genuine uh, suggestion from a real user who gives an advice that I'm using this tool, try it out, or this is basically a, a silent uh, and sneaky ad that somebody put there and there is like there is no user actually and uh, the the person that gave the advice is an ai so this thing basically undermines the whole reddit deal because if those kinds of tools would basically like it depends on what percentage of the the comments would be um like uh, overrun by the bot so for example if it's three percent of all the comments would be AI just talking or like leaving the comments, it's like probably fine. But if uh, all the Reddit comments would be filled to the gills with those AI generated comments, probably the value for the Google to get that data through the API would be uh, like obviously less uh, than yeah. they would like. So yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting question. So, yeah, by the way, Juan, you're totally right. Twitter is absolutely filled with bots already. So that's an issue. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions, folks? I don't have a question. I just want to say thanks for all the great information. This has been a very interesting call and I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Glad. Thanks for, uh, for listening. We're, I mean, this is like, yeah, thanks uh, Max for, for inviting uh, me to do this. I'd love to do it again as we roll stuff out. Um, we will have a product hunt launch sometime next week. Um, please check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll try and drop something Max to you and the community um, would love any help, support tips, tricks, what you wish you could see, like this is the early days, um, you know, uh, we're, we're super pumped to see how this plays out. Uh, so. Yeah, we are super supportive for any product hunt launch, uh, launches that we have, uh, like by our community members. So yeah, please share that, uh, with me. We'll, we'll do our best to help. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, yeah. yeah. Max, I yeah. posted something on the, uh, chat. Mm -hmm. This is Bill. Hey, Bill. Uh -huh. uh, let's... Uh, -huh. uh, so on the chat, um, what about grocery stores collecting and charging to shop? Could they want the data on what is being actually bought and paid for? Um, interesting. So, so that's interesting. So we have a data partner we're launching called Intuizy. Um, that model's not live yet, but essentially they have, they're like a shopper marketing company. So they've got data on, um, you know, uh, who is, uh, kind of traveling to what stores and how they move around. I don't know how they collect it. That's their business. Um, but, um, my, I imagine that they share an economic model with the store owner that um, provides the data to them. And so I don't see why um, why um, what you're outlining is, is really 
a, a stretch, right? I think this is kind of already, I think that, you know, today that data is locked up in a variety of data acquirers and providers that monetize data for a living. And so uh, for sure, we want to democratize access to that data so that um, you, Bill, or Juan, whoever, right, can build their own application that leverages those data sets that historically have been limited to developers and had high upfront paywalls. Um, so, Bill, I don't know if that helps answer your question. But, uh, well, oh, yeah, I, I can give you a customer right, a few, several right now. Oh, that'd be awesome. And transport there, they'll even drive it back to your house. But if you have something to turn in, that that's a nice piece of data to have. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, would love to hear. I mean, if you uh, want to Slack me or something in the in the community or disc, yeah, would love to, to chat about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being on the call. Then uh, we're looking forward for your product hunt lunch and uh, any updates that you will have with your product. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone, and see you during the next call. Yeah, awesome. And thanks. Sorry for the sharing the wrong screen for a while there. Uh, but, that was uh, like, yeah. <laughs> that's not a problem at all. Yeah. Don't worry. And thank, thank you. And again, congratulations. Great product. Talk soon. Thanks. I'll see you guys all yeah. soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow again. Cheers.